Hi everyone, hope you all are doing good. Today I am back with another new topic that is static timing analysis. When it comes to physical design, static timing analysis is one of the most important topic and also interviewer's favorite topic. In this video, I am going to discuss about some of the basics related to static timing analysis. Without any further delay, let's get started. First, we need to understand what is timing analysis. Timing analysis is basically done to check whether the timing constraints mentioned by the designers are met or not. To determine the timing constraints, whether those are met or not, is called as timing analysis. This timing analysis is performed in two ways. One is dynamic timing analysis, another is static timing analysis. Previously, we used to use dynamic timing analysis, but due to certain disadvantages, we moved on to static timing analysis. First, look into dynamic timing analysis. Dynamic timing analysis is a simulation based method. So, in this method, first we need to apply some of the input vectors and we need to check whether we are getting the correct output vectors or not. And this whole result is observed by Verilog or VHDL taste bench. So the main utility of this timing analysis is to check whether the functionality of the design and the timing of the design are correct. But the problem is that this timing analysis method doesn't check for all the timing paths. That means it selects some of the uh, select some of the paths only where it applies the input vectors and it expects correct output vectors and with this process it takes a huge time to complete this analysis because of that we have moved to static timing analysis so static timing analysis means it's basically a method of validating the timing performance of a design by checking all possible paths for timing violations so what it does, it breaks a design into certain possible timing paths and then it checks the propagation delay along each of those paths and also it checks for whether there are any violations related to timing constraints inside the design or at the input or output interface. And this HTA is done based on some timing models. Based on that only, it gives us minimum and maximum delay of logic elements. Since static timing analysis checks for all the timing paths, it, uh, it is much faster than uh, dynamic timing analysis. Because on STA, it, does, it is not necessary to simulate the logical operation of the design or the circuit. But it is more thorough because it checks all the timing paths not just the logical conditions that are sensitized by a set of uh, test vectors but it checks all only the timing not only not the functionality of a circuit design the main advantages of STA is that all timing paths are considered for the timing analysis unlike in dynamic timing analysis and analysis time is less compared on circuit simulation that is on dynamic uh, timing analysis and timing can be analyzed for worst case, best case and this type of analysis is impossible in DTA where we do only simulation based method and STA works with timing models so it is more pessimism and thus gives minimum and maximum delay of the design. So first we need to understand how this dynamic uh, static timing analysis is done. So basically it's a process where we add up the sale delay and the net delays to obtain the path delays. Sale delays means the gate delays. So whatever gate we are using, we have certain gate delays, right? And also the in between two gate, there are certain delays that we no, the propagation delay that is only the net delays. So we need to sum up them then only we can get the total path delays. And this STA tool it verifies whether the total path delay is made the timing or not. So the main purpose of STA first it this STA tool calculates the path delays for optimization tools that is for the PNR tools.
Then based on the path to list, the optimization tools choose certain cells from the timing library to create a circuit that meets timing requirement. That secondly, uh, ST analyzes the timing of a circuit to verify that the circuit works at specified frequency. For different technology node, we'll have a specified frequency, right? So we need to analyze that the timing uh, of the circuit, whether it is meeting or not, according to the timing constraints. The main, main two types of STA tool that we use in the industry are one from Synopsys that is prime time. From Cadence, we use Tempus. These two are the major tools that we use in the industry level. Next, we need to see how this STA work on the design flow. So, if we see, firstly, if we divide VLSI design flow, there are three main section comes. First is RTL design. Next is logical design. And the last is physical design. So, we say front end that is RTL design, middle end that is logical design and back end physical design. First, for RTL design, we need to specify the circuit functionality and the timing libraries. Then we need to specify the RTL that is written on HDL language and uh, the constraints we need to specify there. The timing constraints, design constraints, all these things we need to specify at front end itself. Once this RTL design process is done, then we move for the logical design. So what does this logical design engineers do? First, they do the logic synthesis along with STA. So whatever synthesis tools are available in the uh, industry, those tools nowadays all are, in, all are having inbuilt STA engine in them. So while doing logic synthesis, it is also checking the timing. And once logic synthesis is done, it generates a gate level netlist. After getting the gate level netlist, we again check for the timing. Okay. Once the timing is done, we check for the logic equivalence checking. That means whether the functionality is same or not uh, as RTL design. So we need to maintain that uh, functionality throughout the design flow. From RTL to physical design, the functionality has to be same. Once this logical design is done with the get level netlist we start physical designing so in physical design there are multiple steps from floor plan to place and routes uh, floor plan to post route optimization we perform all the place and route stages and also in physical design also the pnr tool that we use in those pnr tool also an inbuilt sti engine is there so for all the stages of pnr we check timing once this PNR stages are over, we generate a physical layout. After this physical layout, we check for proper timing analysis that is sign of timing analysis we call. So there we check a proper timing analysis and we try to close that timing. That means we try to meet all the timing by that stage. So after that, no timing failure should be there. If it is there means the chip will not work and it is a big damage for the company or the industry. So once the timing is done, then we move for the physical verification where we check the functionality, whether all the design constraints are met, whether all the electrical constraints are met. So we check all these things. And once these are done, we generate an GDS2 file that is basically we have to give to the fabrication team. So GDS2 file basically contains the total physical layout in a computer language, uh, in a computer form of language, in a ASCII language. So this is the overview how we analyze timing throughout the design flow. There are three major timing analysis related terminologies that are like every time we are hearing and we need this. So the first thing is that timing libraries. Why we need timing libraries? Because as we have discussed that for STA calculation, we need cell delay and the net delays to get the path delay. So this cell delay and net delay are provided by the timing libraries and also all the power information and the skew information also given in this timing library only. This timing libraries basically come in dot .lib format file that means in the liberty format file which is standardly used in the industry nowadays. So the STA tool uses the delays of the nets and the cells 
to calculate the path delays and verify the delays against the timing requirements. That's why we need this timing libraries. Next is timing paths. So, STAT will calculate the timing path delays. The timing paths consist of two basic elements. One is the timing arcs in the cells and another is timing arcs of nits. The goal in timing is to restrict the path delay to a certain amount as specified by the constraints. So, we need to understand why we need this timing arc for both the cells and the nits. Because this timing arc means, let's say, if there is a, if we see, if for a change in an input causes a change in the output, that means there is a relation, right? There comes a kind of timing relation. So, that timing relation means there is a path between them that basically affects from the input. If we are check, making a change in the input and it is affecting the output means there is a certain relation, there is a certain connection is there. So, that relation is called as timing relationship. So, this timing arcs provide a simple understanding of the structure and functionality of a gate. So, it represents that timing relationship between two pins of any element or block or any boundaries. On our next video, I am going to discuss about more details on timing paths and this timing arcs. So, there are certain possible timing paths that we need to check and also there are certain characteristics of this timing arcs. So, we will see more details on the next video. Thanks for watching this video. Do like and subscribe to this channel and don't forget to press the bell icon. Do comment down below your feedback on this video and share it as much as possible with your friends, colleagues and VLSI aspirants. See you next time. Till then, stay tuned and stay safe.